Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. And now let's go back in history to the year 1991. It's really a discussion about the Soviet Union and a guy called Gorbachev. Um, the Soviet Union, first of all, existed from 1922 to 1991. A lot of us were still kids when the Soviet Union eventually uh, broke apart. You know, but it was on this day that Gorbachev was uh, a coup, rather, it was attempted um, at um, um, Gorbachev himself. Um, he basically um, had been in charge of the Soviet Union for a couple of years, uh, but on this day, in 1991, he was placed under house arrest during a coup by high-ranking members of his own uh, government. Uh, since becoming leader of the Soviet Union in 1988, he had pursued comprehensive reforms to try to push the Soviet Union and make it a, a world power, you know, and of course uh, had, had negotiations with the um, United States and other countries uh, at that time. But unfortunately for him, uh, Gorbachev, there was a lot of people in his government who didn't agree with his reforms. There's a lot of people in his government who didn't think that he was moving fast enough or was doing the right things. Mikhail Gorbachev is his name. Um, and that includes uh, Russian leader then, Boris Yeltsin. I remember that name very, very well. And so on this day, while he was at his resort, he was placed under house arrest by members of his own government, including the KGB, and his vice president attempted to take over power. But that failed um, after Boris Yeltsin, who was a Russian uh, leader at that time, um, you know, came out and, of course, called on Russians and other members of his army to, you know, protest and, you know, go against the coup. Bear in mind that Boris Yeltsin was one of those who criticized Mikhail Gorbachev and his uh, type of leadership. But Boris Yeltsin was also the person who stood against the coup on this day um, in uh, 1991. Um, and so eventually uh, the uh, coup plotters gave up after three days of keeping Mikhail Gorbachev under house arrest. They gave up and uh, the coup failed. He then uh, took over power and a couple of months later dissolved the Communist Party because the incidents on this day and the next three days uh, dealt a huge blow to his party. Um, he resigned and eventually um, also then, um, or rather dissolved the Communist Party and then eventually resigned in 1990. In 1919, December, actually, um, not long after that, the Soviet Union uh, <clears throat> collapsed. Well, um, this story really is very significant when you talk about the history of the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. um, good that, you know, the coup attempt was poorly planned. You know, when you listen to historians talk about this, they talk about how it was a very disorganized coup process or coup plot and how they spent most of their time bickering amongst themselves, drinking away. So, I mean, just about three days before it started, I mean, the coup, the coup plots failed. Three but days Gover after it started. Three days after it started. Gorbachev's days were even numbered because we know that he didn't stay long there and we saw the collapse of the Soviet Union. But that was what happened today in history, August 18th. And moving on now to our next story that happened today in history, it was, um, like I mentioned, 121 days um, or 121 years ago, that was in 1921, and 1920 on August 18th, what happened in this day in history was that we saw a vote from a 21-year-old, a 24-year-old um, who was influenced by his mother. I mean, that's what historians say, that this guy got, got passed the notes by his mom, encouraging him to go ahead and vote in favor of the 19th Amendment to the United States Constitution. So he received this note and he changed his mind. And it was that one vote that changed the world that, for the United States citizens. And... Um, when this became amended, the ratification of the 19th Amendment of the United States um, Constitution, it meant that women now had a right to vote because that, were, that really was the bone of contention. So eventually um, was a proclamation that women had the right to vote and that they could no longer be subjected to um, public ridicule regarding that. And that really um, takes us all the way to what we've seen now in the United States. Everybody has a right to vote. It's something that we've seen across the world right now. And you won't even be able to imagine that there was a time in our history where women couldn't speak up in public. Women didn't have a say. You know, imagine even having a female anchor. I mean, back then really was something that was quite un unimaginable. But it was great to know that there was this one, you know, vote in the United States back in the year 1920 that really changed the course of history for the United States and her constitution. 
Sadly, Afghanistan seems to be going back to 1920 or prior to 1920 from the reports that we're seeing mm. uh, in the news. And that's maybe the saddest part of the, you know, the last, actually the saddest part of August, you know, um, you know across the whole world, uh, the events in Afghanistan. Um, I saw a video yesterday of a, a CNN anchor asking the Taliban or some Taliban members, you know, if the rights of women will be protected, if they will be allowed to vote, if they will be allowed to work, you know, and they laughed it off, basically. Uh, saying she must be kidding, you know, if, if um, that's what's expected. And that's very different from the um, political, you know, statements that are being made on behalf of the Taliban that claim that, oh, you know, everybody will be respected. Nobody needs to leave Afghanistan. Women's rights will be protected and some of all of that. But, you know, in the real sense of what very likely would play out, you know, it's, it's very, very different. Yeah, and it's funny that we actually see parallels regarding the two stories we talked about today in history, two very different events to what's actually happening in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. Because obviously we saw the Soviet headliners, you know, going with their coup against Gorbachev and the Soviet Union collapse. That's, you know, you, yeah. if you could also see the Taliban took over and, you know, it seems that the Afghanistan, as we knew, it has collapsed because what we have now is Islamic Emirates of Afghanistan. But um, that's what happened today in history. Street, August the 18th. Um, we'll take a break here and we'll return with our first major conversation. Stay with us.